And that's what the nations are doing. They are starting to arm themselves. Even the small countries are starting to arm themselves now. Go ahead and read. Let the weak say I am strong. See, you see, the, let the weak say I'm Look at little Iran. They started to get nuclear weapons now. Look at little North Korea. They started, half of their country starving, the other half living lavishly, and they got the fourth most powerful army in the world. And all the nations, even the small nations, started to arm themselves, trying to get nuclear weapons. Now, you know, how did the prophets know about this? And then we live it in this time right now. And Jesus said, except those days be short, shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. How did he know that? And now we live living in the times where man can destroy this world ten times over. That's how we know that this is the word of God. If there is a God, and his name is called the God of Israel. Go ahead and read. As the weak say, I am strong. Assemble uh -huh. yourselves and come. Uh -huh. All ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Go ahead. Then the cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Uh huh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh huh. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. He said, I'm gonna sit to judge the heathen round about. I'm sitting. I'm bringing y'all down to this valley so y'all can fight, and I'm gonna judge y'all. Go ahead and read. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Uh -huh. Come, get you down, for the press is full. Uh -huh. The fat's overflowing. What is this fat that's overflowing? Remember Jesus, we read that he said he's going to fill the places with dead bodies? No. The fats are going to overflow. There's going to be so many dead people on the earth that the Lord will have to call for the uh, uh, fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, to come and eat up all these bodies. Because he's going to fill places with dead bodies. He said the fat is the press is, I mean the fat is overflowing. Go ahead and read. For their wickedness is great. Uh-huh. Multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision. Go ahead. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is near. See, we ain't talking about the Saturday, are we? Come on. <laughs> he said the day of the Lord. Yes, sir. And we talk about when the Lord getting ready to pour his wrath out of this earth. Now look, he's going to put a date on it. Verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Uh -huh. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now look, he's going to stop the moon. He's going to stop the sun. And it's still going to be men here. Whoa. Now wait a minute, I thought the sun was God. I thought it was God. No, but the Lord going to put it out. I thought the moon did too. You talking about the sun is God. Well, he get, he losing his strength now, ain't it? He losing his power. Cause look, the moon is ruling, starting to rule not the uh, the nights now, right? The nights are getting longer, right? And the days are getting shorter. So your God starting to lose his power. <laughs> and soon, by the time December comes, he gonna lose all his power. Cause the moon is gonna be ruling then. Then what you gonna do now? What you got to say now? Make it plain, brother. Talk about the sun is God. No, the sun ain't no God. But anyway, go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> Sixteen. Uh huh. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Uh huh. And utter His voice from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people he always and the strength about, of the children of Israel. He always talk about his people, don't he? Everybody, oh, the Lord did away with Israel. The Gentiles are running it now. And they think Gentiles mean all nations. <laughs> they even got that right. But the Lord going to be the hope of his people. He said the children of Israel. He didn't say the Gentiles did it. Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, uh -huh. my holy mount. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Now you know that's future, don't you? Because there ain't nothing but strangers over there. Now, and that includes the one that's calling himself a Jew. He is a stranger. 
He is our twin brother, but he's still a stranger to us. But he is no Israelite, and he is no Jew. Go ahead and read. Verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the mountains shall drop down new wine, uh -huh. and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with water. Uh -huh. And the fountains shall come forth of the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And shall water and shall water the valley of Shittim. Let's go to Matthew, back to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Let's go, I should have told you to hold your hand there. Let's go back to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Because this is going to be a beautiful time, but we got to get through this great tribulation first. But it's going to be a beautiful time after that, especially for the Lord's people. Matthew 24, Matthew, and all those who love his appearing. That's for the stranger too. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up in verse 29. Matthew 24 and 29. Go ahead and read it. Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened, uh -huh. and the moon shall not give her light. Now we're looking at the same time we just read over with Joel, right? Go ahead and read. And the stars shall fall from heaven, uh -huh. and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now we're talking about the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh -huh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. You seen anything like this yet? We seen all the nations crying and mourn, mourning and stuff happening. Go ahead and read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven uh -huh. with power and great glory. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. Now, so now, hold on one second. Because, you know, he's going to gather from one end of the earth to the other. So this is going to be a worldwide gathering. A worldwide gathering. Everybody understand what we're dealing with? That's why we need the less. That's what this feast is all about. This worldwide gathering that's coming. The Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of End Gathering. It's going to be a worldwide gathering. Let's go to Zechariah, the 14th chapter, Zechariah 14. This is going to be a beautiful time. Yes, sir. And many of us, we love his appearing. We love it. We, we understand what's going to happen when the Lord appears. But we got to get through that great tribulations, don't we? Amen. Uh, Jacob going to have some troubles. In fact, this whole world is going to have some troubles. Let's go to Zechariah 14. Because when the Lord come with them clouds and everything, he's going to have to do some fighting. He's going to do some fighting. Zechariah 14 and 1. Because everybody, the people think they're going to get raptured up somewhere. You ain't getting raptured nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. When all hell breaks loose on this earth, you're going to be right here if you're alive. Zechariah 14 and 1, you can go and try to put your, uh, 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 go try to go into, you know, they got those uh, bomb shelters and stuff. That ain't going to help you. Now when the Lord do his thing, you're going to be running up out of there. <laughs> Zechariah 14, Zechariah 14 and 1, go ahead and read it. Behold the day of the Lord cometh. Uh -huh. And thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Uh -huh. Now we're talking about the covenant of the Lord again. Go ahead and read. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Uh -huh. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, uh -huh. and the women ravished. Now, now look at what's going to happen to Jerusalem now. Because the children of Israel ain't there. So you got the stranger that's there, but he said, look, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house is rifled, and the women ravaged. Go ahead. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Uh-huh. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Go ahead. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. Then he's going to go forth and fight against those nations. Go ahead and read. As when he fought in the day of battle. Uh-huh. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley. 
and half of the mountains shall be moved toward the north, uh -huh. and half of it toward the south. Now, you know, he said, look, uh, uh, and, uh, 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 and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and toward the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half the mountain shall remove toward the north. You know, because I, I had asked his brother one time, you know, I called his uh, uh, church, but they talked about the Messiah was here. I said, he is? I said, well, I read him this right here. I said, the Mount of Olives will cleave in the midst thereof, and, and, it's going, uh, and there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of them toward the south. I said, when did this happen? Look here, do you want the information that we're going to send you or not? They want to answer this question right here. <laughs> they couldn't answer this. You tell me the Lord is here already? When did this happen right here? Verse 5, go ahead. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. Uh -huh. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Go ahead. Yea, ye shall flee. Uh -huh. like, ye, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, uh -huh. king of Judah. Uh -huh. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with him. All the saints gonna come with him. Skip down to verse 9. What does it say? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Ooh, wait a minute. And the Lord will be king over what? All the earth. And the Lord will be king over all heaven. The earth. The earth. See, I know, that's how we know you living in a fantasy if you're still talking about you going to heaven. You living in a fantasy. You're a fool of yourself. <laughs> and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Uh-huh. In that day shall there be one Lord uh -huh. in his name. And one. you ain't gonna hear no for these other gods. Where is your comedic science and stuff gonna be then? Where's your Moorish Americans and Islam and all them talking to the black people now? Where is it gonna be then? Because if Ishmael wanna serve his God, let him serve him. You understand? Ain't nobody really serving this comedic God no more. Except, except Israel. <laughs> he said, The Lord will be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Let's go now. Let's go to Isaiah the 11th chapter. Because let's see what he's going to do when he's a king on this earth. And it said all the earth, right? Sure enough. Isaiah 11, Isaiah 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Isaiah 11 and 6. Will you get it? Go ahead and read it. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Uh-huh. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Go ahead. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. We haven't seen nothing like this and I keep on stressing that because we are dealing with end time prophecy. And we are dealing with the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. Uh -huh. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Now you take a, a lion some straw and see if he eat it. That's if you can get away from him quick enough. Because he eat meat, right? <laughs> you better throw that straw out and take off running. Because I guarantee he's going to he gonna go for you as far as eat go and he's going to lay on the straw. Go ahead and read. <laughs> Why he need? That's right. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the suckling, sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass. Uh huh. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Uh huh. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Uh huh. For the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord. Uh huh. As the waters cover the sea. Now you know this future, don't you? Because we and there are many gods, there are thousands of gods out here, aren't there? People got new new gods coming up, popping up. Every year is a new god. <laughs> well, he said right here, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters come to sea. Everybody gonna know about this God then. Amen. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. And in that day. There shall be a root of Jesse, uh -huh. 
which shall stand for an ensign for the people. Uh -huh. To it shall, to it shall the Gentiles seek, uh -huh. and his rest shall be glorious. See, the Gentiles even gonna be seeking after the Lord. The ones that's running the earth right now, who God allowed to run the earth right now, which is, we call the white man or Caucasian. Not Esau. Esau is not the white man. I mean, I mean, again, still, people still uh, 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 sending me messages talking about Esau is the white man. Plain and simple. I said, read it to me in the Bible. It's plain and simple to you. But show it to me in the Bible so it can be played and simple to me. People still talk about how long ago we did that lesson. People still calling me, still emailing me. Esau is a white man. White like, man. Yo, something else, boy. Give me a break on that. We already showed you that he's not the white man. He's still, he's not the, Esau mixed with the Arab. He might have did, but that don't make. Esau and the Arab, that, that child is mixed with Esau the Arab, that don't make him no Gentile. I'm telling you, I, I, I've been hearing a lot of stuff here lately. Y'all excuse me. What verse we have, brother? 11. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass at that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Now, ain't that a gathering right there? He said he's going to uh, uh, set his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people. Go ahead. Which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt Go ahead. and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam uh -huh. and from Shinar and from Heman and from the Isles of the Sea. And from the Sea. All these are African countries till you get to that island of the sea like the Bahamas and Jamaica and Martha's Vineyard. We know that the Israelites were, or, or slaves were carried there, right? On ships. The islands of the sea. He gonna gather them from there too. Go ahead and read. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation. Uh huh. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Go ahead. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. See, Judah been spread out across the four corners of the earth. Judah, Benjamin, Le Levi. Yes, uh, but he said he gonna gather them though from the four corners of the earth. That is gonna be a blessed day there, ain't it? I hope I'm around to see this time, man. Amen. Cause that is gonna be a beautiful day. Everybody, everybody uh, 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 spitting on us, talking about us, racist towards us. But then when this time come right here, everybody gonna want to be your friend. Oh, we brothers. Oh, no, we ain't. <laughs> Say ten men from every nation gonna grab a hold to the skirt of him with a Jew and say, "Take me with you, for the Lord is with you." I might take ten of y'all, but ain't the rest of y'all, uh-uh. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. What verse you stopped at? Verse 12? Yeah. All right, let's go now. Let's go to Isaiah 56. Because the stranger is coming too. The stranger is not just Israel is going to be gathered, but Israel will be gathered first up. The Jew first, then the stranger. Isaiah 56 and 6. Isaiah 56 and 6. Will you get it? Go ahead and read it. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord uh -huh. to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Go ahead. To be his servants uh -huh. and to keep the Sabbath from polluting See, it. you got to do something too, stranger. You got to keep the Sabbath too. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it uh -huh. and taking hold of my covenant. Stop right here because you know I've had Gentiles ask me, I mean, guy was so sad about, you know, I'm a Gentile, brother, what I mean, can I make it into the kingdom? Shemites have called me, well, you know, I know uh, that I'm not no Jew, but uh, can I make it into the kingdom too? And I read them this right here. Also the son of the stranger that joined himself to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant, everyone that keep the Sabbath from polluting and take a hold of my covenant. Amen. That's it, brother. Everyone. Yes, sir. Yeah. So Gentiles, Shemites, Hamites, 
Don't let nobody tell you that you can't get into the kingdom. Nobody. Because you can get into the kingdom too. He just told you. Everyone to take a hold of my covenant. Go ahead and read. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain. Uh -huh. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Go ahead. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Uh -huh. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And that's our motto too, ain't it? Yes, sir. I, my house should be called a house of prayer for all people. Go ahead and read. The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, said, Uh huh. Yet will I gather others to him. Stop right there. Yet he said, The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, said, Yet will I gather others to him. So other nations are going to be gathered to the Lord too. It's written. If you won't be a servant of the Lord, keep his Sabbath and lay a hold of the covenant. You will be gathered too, but the Jew first. You see who we gather first, right? The Lord God which gathers the outcasts of who? Israel. Then he said, yet will I gather others to him. So the Israelite will be gathered first, then the stranger. Let's not get that twisted. Finish that. Yet would I gather others to him beside those that I gathered unto him. Now, Jesus told you this. Let's go to John, the 10th chapter, John 10. Jesus told you this. Ain't nobody paying attention to what the prophets, nobody paying attention to what even the master is saying. John 10 and 15, John 10 and 15. We are talking about an end gathering right here. John 10 and 15, go ahead and read it. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Uh -huh. And I lay down my life for the sheep. See, because, you know, people think that Jesus just, uh, they just came and got him. And took him and uh, 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 nailed him on the cross. Uh-uh. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. If I'm laying down my life, then that means I'm giving up my life for somebody, right? Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. And other sheep I have, which and, uh, are not of his fold. And his other fold. sheep I have, which are not of his fold. Didn't we just read that over in Isaiah? Others he must gather besides those that are gathered. Go ahead and read. Them also I must bring. Uh-huh. And they shall hear my voice. Uh-huh. And there shall be one fold. Go ahead. And one shepherd. Ooh. Anybody understand that? The stranger going to be gathered too. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Now we're going to read part of this parable. And then we're going to clear it up. Or show you the rest of it in the next lesson. On the eighth day. So let's start it now. Uh, Matthew 13 and 24. Matt, we ain't got long to go. Matthew 13 and 24. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Uh -huh. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Uh, they, they sowed tares among the wheat, go ahead. And went his way. But when the blade was sprung up uh -huh. and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Uh-oh, so now the tares appeared with this wheat. And we're going we're gonna to explain this in the eighth day. So the tares appeared with the wheat. Go ahead and read. So the servants of the household came, holder came and said unto him, uh -huh. Sir, does not thou sow good seed in thy field? Uh-huh. From which then have it tares? Now these tares, they couldn't be good because he asked them about, look, did you sow good seed? He said, well, where these tares come from then? So these tares are not good then, are they? Go ahead and read. 28. Uh-huh. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Uh-huh. The servant said unto him, Without then that we go and gather them? Go ahead. Uh-huh. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, uh -huh. you root up also the wheat. Now wait them. a minute. So now, he don't want you to root up these tares with the wheat. 
Because when you root up these chaps with the wheat, you might root up some of the wheat. So the re wheat being the good and the tares being the bad then, right? Amen. Well, what'd he say? Let both grow together. Uh-huh. Until the harvest. Go ahead. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, uh -huh. gather ye together first the tares. He said, gather ye get together first the tares in the harvest. Go ahead and read. And bind them in, the bun in bundles to burn them. Ooh, so we know the tares are uh, 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 not good then, right? Because he's going to burn them. Go ahead and read. But to gather the wheat into my barn. But he said, gather the wheat into my barn. Now we're going to explain this during the eighth day. But look, let's look at this again. Let's go to Luke, the third chapter. Luke 3. He said, look, we're going to burn the tares, but we're going to gather the wheat into the barn. Luke 3 and 16. Luke 3 and 16. Luke 3 and 16. Go ahead and read it. John answered, saying unto them all, uh -huh. I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come up. The latchet of whose shoes I the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Uh -huh. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Go ahead. Because if you don't keep his word, I mean, if you keep his word, then he's going to be baptized you with the Holy Ghost. But if you don't keep his word, he's going to baptize you with what? Fire. But remember, the tares were burnt, thrown into the fire. They were burning and thrown and burned into the fire, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. Whose fan is in his hand. Uh-huh. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. Go ahead. And will gather the wheat into his garner. Wait a minute. He's going to gather the wheat into what? His, his garner. garner. That's the barn. He's going to gather his wheat into the barn or the garner. We're going to show you exactly what this talk about in the eighth day. But go ahead and read. But the chafe, he will burn with fire unquenchable. Now, let's go to John, the seventh chapter. John 7. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1, John 7 and 1. Like I said, we're going to deal with that during the eighth day. We're going to show you exactly what that's talking about. The parable of the wheat and the tares. John 7 and 1. John 7 and 1. I just want to show you right now that Jesus himself kept the feast of tabernacles. 7 and 1. Go ahead and read it. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Jewry because uh -huh. the Jews sought to kill him. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. Go ahead. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. Go ye up. Go ye up unto this feast. Uh -huh. I go not up yet unto this feast. He said, I'm not going yet. Y'all going on up. But I'm not going yet. If he said yet, that means he's going there, right? <laughs> so Jesus keeping the feast of tabernacles. Go ahead and read. For my time is not yet full. Come. Uh-huh. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. Uh-huh. But when his brethren were gone up, then when he also up into the feast. So Jesus went up to the feast, right? He kept the feast of tabernacles. Well, so what are we supposed to be doing then? We, we supposed to follow out his death. What are we supposed to be doing then? Likewise. Keeping the feast of tabernacles. Yes, sir. Go ahead and finish that. Then when he also up into the feast, uh -huh. not openly, but as it were in secret. Now, let's go to Zechariah, go back to Zechariah 14 chapter. Zechariah 14. We just got a few more after this. Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Zechariah 14 and 9. Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Uh huh. And that day shall there be one Lord, uh -huh. and his name one. Now look, look at what he's going to say for those who don't come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Skip down to verse 16. Go ahead and read it. But this this talking future, where the Lord is going to be king over all the earth, right? Amen. This talking future. Verse 16, go ahead and read it. And it shall come to pass, 
that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to uh -huh. worship the king. And they're going to do what? Worship the king. Well, what are they going to be worshiping the king at? On the earth. And this is going to be live flesh and blood people. Come because on. I got some brothers saying that, look, once the Lord come and uh, pour out his wrath on this earth, it's not going to be any oh. more flesh and blood people. But right here, we this the Lord gonna be king over all the earth, right? Yes, sir. And these people, he said, the Lord at, at, uh, at Jerusalem shall even go up year to year to worship the king. So nations gonna go up year to year to worship the king. Go ahead and read. The Lord of hosts. Uh huh. And to keep the feast of tabernacles. And to do what? To keep the feast of tabernacles. So now look, this is talking future when the Lord is gonna be on the earth. And he said, the nation's gonna come up and they're gonna worship the king. And to do what? Keep the feast of tabernacles. So what are we supposed to be doing now? Keeping the feast of tabernacles. I mean, it don't get no plainer than this. But we everybody understand this is end time prophecy right here. Where the Lord is gonna be king on the earth. Keep reading. 17. Uh-huh. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families on the earth into Jerusalem to worship the king, uh -huh. the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. even upon them shall be no rain. Now, if you don't get no rain on your land, what's going to happen to you? You're going to starve to death. That's right. Yes, sir. You don't want to keep up the Feast of Tabernacles? You want to keep it? Okay, no problem. I'm not going to let it rain on your uh, land. Then you're going to come crawling to me to keep the feet of the tabernacle then. Lord know how to get you, don't he? Yes, he stopped that, cut off that food, boy. You be starving. That. Well, Lord, what you want me to do? Right. Look here, I, I, I try to walk on this water. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh huh. And if the family of Egypt go not up uh -huh. and come not, that have no rain. Uh -huh. There shall be the plague. Go ahead. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Now, if it's all spiritual beings at this time, the spiritual beings he gave, why would he smite spiritual beings? And then those spiritual beings will be on earth, those will be his service, right? So why is he talking about smiting them and all this stuff? This is flesh and blood people. So no. Verse 19, go ahead. 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt uh -huh. and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Ooh, read that verse 20. Go ahead. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the, bo the bowls before the altar. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh, 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 Ezekiel th uh, 37. Ezekiel 37. Let's go right over to Ezekiel the 37. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Ezekiel 37 and 12. We got two more after this. Ezekiel 37 and 12. Go ahead and read it. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. Behold, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. Oh, and bring you, you know, you see what he's saying? Because he said he had to raise David up, didn't he? So this time he said, look, I'm going to cause y'all to come, the children of Israel, I'm going to cause y'all to come up out of y'all graves. So look, this end time, right? This talking about the resurrection right here, isn't it? Go ahead and read. And ye shall know that I am the Lord uh -huh. when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, uh -huh. and brought you up out of your graves. Go ahead. And shall put my spirit in you, uh -huh. and ye shall live. And you shall live, uh -huh. and I shall place you in your own land. And I'm going to place you in your own land. You know, they've been over there fighting over that land for 2,000 years, and it don't belong to neither one of them. That's right. That's the Israelites and the Edomites, which people call the Arabs and the Jews. Been fighting on that land for 2,000 years, and they don't even realize it's not going to be neither one of y'all land. Because the Lord going to kick all of y'all out, and he's going to put his people in the land. What verse you at? 14. Skip down to verse 21. Go ahead. 
and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, uh -huh. whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. Uh -huh. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. He said, I will make them one nation upon the land now, in the mountains of Israel. Because right now we are scattered. But at this time, he said, I'm going to make them one nation. Go ahead and read. I'm going to gather them on every side. And this is why we can keep it in feet. Because of this in gathering that's coming. Where the Lord is going to gather his people from all over the world. Go ahead and read. 22. Uh -huh. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mount of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. Uh -huh. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. Neither shall they de defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, uh -huh. nor with any of their transgression. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, Wherein they have sinned, uh -huh. and will cleanse them. And will cleanse them, because our people need some some spiritual healing, don't they? Yeah. So no. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And will cleanse them, so shall they be my people. Uh huh. And I will be their God. Go ahead. Verse twenty-four. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Now we just we read this again. You see that? He said, and David, my servant, shall be their king. Uh-huh. And they all shall have one shepherd. Uh-huh. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Now he said, David gonna be the king. If David gonna be the king, then he gotta raise David up first, don't he? People say, oh, you literally think that David gonna be the king? Yep. Yeah. Because I know it's literally gonna be a resurrection to us. Verse 25, go ahead and read it. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant. See, he's going to gather the children of Israel and take them back to their land. That's going to be a beautiful time, ain't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The world ain't ready for nothing like this, boy. Finish that. Wherein your, wherein your fathers have dwelt, uh -huh. and they shall dwell therein, uh -huh. even they and their children and uh -huh. their children's children, forever. For how long? Forever. Forever. Go ahead. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. We know that this is future now, don't we? Let's go now. Let's go. We, uh, we, we got two more. Uh, this uh, Exodus, the 34th chapter. Exodus 34. Exodus 34, and we're going to pick it up at verse 22. Exodus 34 and 22. When you get it, go ahead and read it. we got one more. Get, get it ready. We're going to get those announcements ready. And then we're going to get that food ready. Amen. Exodus 34 and 22. 34 and 22. Go ahead and read it. And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest, uh -huh. and the feast of end gathering at the at the year's end. Now he said everybody had to come up and keep the feast of tabernacles, right? Now he said, look, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of what end gathering. Go ahead. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, uh -huh. God of Israel. Uh, but we know, reading Deuteronomy 16 chapter, everybody's going to have to appear, right? And this in gathering is the same thing as a feast of tabernacle. And that's what we've been looking at. This in gathering. That's why we keep it this feast. Because we know that there's an in gathering coming. Go ahead and read. For I will cast out the nations before thee, uh -huh. and enlarge thy borders. Go ahead. Neither shall any man desire th thy land when thou shalt go up to uh -huh. appear before the Lord thy God thrice uh -huh. in the year. Thrice in uh, the year. Let's go now. This is going to be the last scripture. Because you're going to see some alcohol back there. And I know somebody would look. They had alcohol. <laughs> but you know, some people, you can't drink. You're a servant of God? You, you. I know the people are there that asked one of us, we went to the, uh, get, some, get some liquor. Man, y'all, where y'all going with all that liquor? 
Well, the church. What? Y'all serve me with that church? <laughs> that would have really wild up there, wouldn't it? What kind of church y'all going to? Can I come? <laughs> Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14. And we're going to pick up at verse 23. This will be last. 14 and 23. Go ahead and read and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to eat before the Lord our God. Uh-huh. In the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Uh-huh. The tide of thy corn and thy wine and of thine oil and the firstlings of the earth and of thy flocks. Uh-huh. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, uh -huh. or the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, uh -huh. when the Lord thy God have blessed thee. When the Lord thy God have blessed thee, go ahead and read. Then shalt thou turn it into money, uh -huh. and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Verse 26, go ahead. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. Or oxen. Uh -huh. Or for sheep. Uh -huh. Or for wine. Or for wine, what else? Or for strong drink. Or for strong drink. Now, we're not serving no strong drink around here. Everybody understand that, right? We're going to have a little wine, maybe a little beer, but we ain't serving no strong drink. We want everybody to make it home safely. Don't nobody get pulled over by police. Read that one more time, so somebody didn't get that. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, uh -huh. or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and uh -huh. thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And that's what we're going to do, because we are family, aren't we? Hallelujah. And we're going to sit, and we're going to rejoice before the Lord. And let's give the Lord a hand. On this piece of tabernacle. So we're going to eat, and we're going to rejoice before the Lord. We want, we want, uh, I want everybody to have a good time tonight. Because the Lord said it thus. So now, that's the end of the lesson. I thank everybody for coming out. And I thank all those for that's watching us via internet. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to have a reading of the announcements. Grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel's Church of the Living God. If this is your first visit, we hope you come back and worship with us again next Saturday. There's no eating and drinking in the sanctuary with the exception for water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers, please remove any hat cover upon entering the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts. Please jogging pants, shorts, tight fitting pants, or any other revealing attire. Sisters, you must have a head covering. This is required. Hat, scarf, etc. Do not wear short skirts, midriffs, or see-through blouses, mini dresses, halter tops of any kind, splits, tight fitting, or cleavage revealing attire. Modest apparel only. We have Bibles and scarves available for visitors. If you use a Bible or scarf that belongs to Israel's Church of the Living God, please return it prior to leaving. If you live in the Lake County, Illinois area, please watch our television program, The Word for Life, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., Comcast Channel 17. You can visit our Facebook page at Israel's Church of the Living God to post questions or comments. All courses will be answered according to the Bible. Click the Facebook like button to see our daily posts. Also click the follow button to receive class information, church activities, and updates are in the news feed. In an effort to expand the church ministry, we have started the building fund. You can make your secure payment. Excuse me, excuse me. Hello, excuse me. You can make your secure payments online using our PayPal account at www.israelchurchoftlg.org. Or you can send your donation to the attention of ICOTLG, PO Box 8933, Waukegan, Illinois, 60079. We thank you for your past contributions and hope for your continued support. Free will donations are welcome and appreciated. 